please remember to leave a like, a comment, share the video about, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome to This Week at X. Today we're going to start by going back to 2023. In January 2023, Twitter suspended Nick Fuentes from the platform only a day after it restored him. He was suspended because of the widespread outrage because of that restoration. Oh, he also then went on to make several anti-Semitic comments towards Hannah Gay's a senior researcher at the Southern Poverty Law Center, and that is a direct quote from an article. I don't actually remember what he wrote. In 2020, he was suspended from Facebook 2021, from YouTube. He made his own platform as a pet project. It's hilarious what he's gone on to do since. There have been calls of late to reinstate him because of Elon Musk's free speech absolutist stance. Many creators, in fact, many influencers, have had their accounts restored, the most notable being Alex of the Jones variety. I said it like that on purpose in the vain hope, vague hope, the, uh, well, wishful thinking, I guess, that YouTube won't demonetize the video simply by mentioning a name but not talking about the subject matter. It could be wishful thinking on my part, though. We'll wait and see. Because of human rights groups and their stance on hate speech, running counter to what Elon Musk believes, Elon's in a bit of a bind right now. So for this, we're now going to go to Defiant L's, Describe Joshua in two words or less. Today starts with cops attacking students for their solidarity in Gaza, in Atlanta, Chicago, Princeton, New Jersey. The Free Palestine movement, like every single movement for a better world, requires the abolition of the police. White supremacists are now marching in Charleston, West Virginia, with no police in sight. Elon Musk, goldfish memory. He posted completely contradictory demands only two days apart. As you can see from the tweet with the uh, images, two days apart, and they are contradictory. Gas, blue check mark, you work for Jewish people. Nick Fuentes, huh? What does it say about our society that the cops let BLM torch our cities but won't let students criticize Israel? It means Jewish people control America. That is the obvious conclusion. Elon Musk, while I don't condone all the actions of any one group, I must admit to being openly philosemitic. Philosemitic? I don't know that word. Do forgive me here, folks. And generally try to see the good in all people. Goya being groiper. Bring Nick Fuentes back on Twitter. Nick Fuentes' account was tagged. He's been banned since 2021. What happened to your promise, big guy? Correction, 2023. He had his account reinstated at least once before. Elon Musk. Very well. He will be reinstated, provided he does not violate the law and let him be crushed by the comments and community notes. It is better to have anti-whatever out in the open to be rebuted than grow simmering in the darkness. Now that is something I agree with. Many people have called for a number of people over the years to be absolutely erased from existence. Onision's a great example. If he was terminated from every platform, you wouldn't then be able to see what he's doing. And considering some of the accusations levied against him, I don't like that. Ashley St. Clair. This will get enormous backlash. But if it is to be a free speech platform, it is the right move. I say this as someone who has been viciously attacked by his followers for years now. I do believe Nick was also incredibly radicalized as a result of censorship. Elon Musk. Fate loves irony but hates hypocrisy. I cannot claim to be a defender of free speech, but then permanently ban someone who hasn't violated the law, no matter how much I disagree with what they say. This will probably cause us to lose a lot of advertisers and makes me sad, but a principle is a principle, and it is going to hit him hard. There's no denying that. At time of recording, Nick Fuentes' account is still listed as suspended. I'm intrigued to see how this unfolds as time goes by. I had to do a bit of a dive on this one to find where the tweet came from, because Elon Musk tweets a lot, and I saw this originally through the quartering who said that Elon Musk is about to experience the full unbridled power of the industrial censorship complex. Godspeed, good sir. I've told this story a few times on stream, I don't know if I've done it in video form. Years ago, Nick Griffin was going to be giving a speech at my university, and many tried to censor this. This was uh, the first decade of this millennium, later part of it. My view on it was, let him speak. I want him to have that platform so he can be debunked. Let him try and get his point across, articulate his thoughts and his meanings, and then let the court of public opinion make their own mind up. Don't go into it already making your mind up. Allow him to speak and then do the research to debunk him. Or if you have already done the research, debunk him in a public space. Some people just want to speak and I fully understand that. 
but that's the wonderful thing about Twitter. There are many people on this platform that will community note the crap out of Nick Fuentes and many others just to do it to make sure they don't earn anything from what they say. And someone like Nick Fuentes would want to make money from what he says. He certainly has enough supporters to do that. To explain what an incel is. So an incel is just like someone who is involuntarily celibate. Loser sitting on Reddit for 23 hours a day um, with cheetah dust and empty Mountain Dew cans all around them. And it just has a real stank smell that is involved with these people. Perfect. Because I'm just going to paint you an image. And like the fedora is a little yeah. crusty and the, the, beard, the, the neck beard is strong, but the facial hair is weak. And there's a bald spot in the back. And you could just, and you could just see the fedora just hanging on for dear life. I'm not going to lie, the idea of describing an incel these days feels a bit dated. And also a tad hypocritical, because I can be certain you would not be the type to take back the criticism. After all, you have just made a purchase. If you'd like, I could happily give you a receipt. Not because I want to defend incels, because I find them quite amusing. I find everyone amusing, because honestly, please stop procreating. Be incels and femcels. I, I, honestly, you're doing me a favour. No, but instead because stereotype. It's a bit lazy. And solely done as an excuse to make someone think they look good by dunking on another person. Or groups of people. And while we're in the ballpark of jokes, it seems only right that we continue the conversation from Denim's TV yesterday. As you will have known from the exhibition of stupid people if you watched yesterday's video, Denim's TV upped a bounty, jokingly, let's go with quotes around that word, to Asmon Gold. The context was, Asmon Gold was reacting to Tone Man's death threat against Grums. Based on the terms of service of Twitch, the response from Denim's TV is an auto-ban. But there is some one rule for me but not for thee going on here. Tipster, because when it suits him, one rule for me but not for thee is applicable in this, Denim has made an obvious joke and this dude is acting like she put out a legit hit on his life. Grow a effing spine and go back to bitching about how Stella Blade isn't jerking off material enough for you. Stella Blade's getting a lot of attention of late. But I like the it's just a jerk bruh when it suits you. But if it's anyone you like, any friend of yours, tippy woo, you suddenly go, well it can't be just a jerk bruh. It must be super serial. Nick Diorio, the you are responsible for your audience crowd sure turns heel quick when a leftist streamer is the one jokingly asking her audience to unalive someone she hates, lol. What I don't like is that Doe Jengles includes a picture in the reply of Tipster liking Di Serrano. I like Di Serrano. I don't like this. With Tipster, a lot of what he says comes from a place of convenience. If he's seen publicly standing up for denims, it draws attention to what is a dead YouTube channel. If he's seen standing up for denims, maybe she'll shout him out for defending her. I think there's more chance of you growing a full face beard than there is you actually regrowing your channel, unless you change trajectory. What do, what do you know? That you're a musician. But that's why I'm interviewing you today, so I can get to know you. So I'm a musician? Mm -hmm. What the fuck that mean? Make magic or something? I, what is that? That's ghetto. I don't think. So you, you think. I didn't say magician, Suki. I said musician. And I think you are a musician. No, baby, I do music. So you, just really, just really quick, for the record, could you say you don't think you're a musician? I'm not none of that. But then after that, you just said, I do music. Yeah, I do music. There are levels to stupid in all walks of life. Apparently, in this case, a uh, person involved in the music industry. And I have read a number of tweets that indicate this is a legit interview, pre-interview thing that went down, not a skit. Okay, while we're in this ballpark, we're going to quickly touch on a Rolling Stone tweet. Billie Eilish tells Rolling Stone she's not rocking with whales. Quote, Oh my god, how can anybody just accept that whales exist, y'all? Those things are enormous. The noise they make, that stuff, is terrifying to me. Ew. There's context here, because while it can be seen as a bit narrow-minded, at the time of the interview, she was taking oh, multiple shots to try and get the album cover for her new album coming out soon. So she was being submerged in water. As it turns out, she has a fear, irrational fear, most fears are, of large bodies of water. Contents of that also happen to fall within that bracket. So I'm not going to try and simp for Billie Eilish here because I don't know who she is. When people reference intellectual giants in conversation, there's a bit more to it and I bother to read the article to find out. Moving on, let's go to somebody else that whenever I talk about on this channel I do incredibly badly on YouTube views, like Elon Musk for example. JK Rowling, we don't address racism by pretending white people can be black, nor is ableism sold by giving able-bodied people wheelchairs. So why are women and girls supposed to applaud their male imitators, centre them in language and hand over their rights their foremothers fought for? This is the third tweet of a number of tweets. The reason I'm mentioning this tweet, without any of the other tweets referenced, 
beyond people having rather interesting discourse underneath is because Daniel Radcliffe was doing his rounds on social media of late, things he'd said, not his presence on social media, where many have pointed out he's an ungrateful little bitch because he does not believe he owes JK Rowling anything for what he is now. Many have said he is a net worth of 110 million US dollars. He only has that because he was the face of Harry Potter. There is a belief that with what Daniel Radcliffe has said of late, he has thrown his weight behind a message. That message, in turn, while giving him many opportunities, no doubt, in the acting space, he never needed in the first place. The man wanted to prove he could be an actor, so he went and did Equus. He got up on stage and did things on stage. He's had some fantastic roles over the years. He didn't have to be in a Marvel movie, for example. He managed to forge a career and be incredibly successful at it. But when one has a platform and they believe a message enough, they will speak their message. When it runs counter to the person that essentially made you or gave you your start, this is where many draw that line and say that you are ungrateful. So it's a poison chalice for him. He can't win. He might think he can because he doesn't really involve himself in social media, but eventually the court of public opinion will bleed out into the real space. Consequences, right? Hi, my name is Tempest, and if you don't want me to step on your toes, move your feet. Yes, there's nothing quite as intimidating as an individual identifying with the name Tempest. I feel like you've chosen three extra letters that don't belong on your name. There is a YouTube channel called The Double Clicks. Years ago, I used to listen to their music because I thought it was quirky and fun. One of them has since uh, transitioned and identifies with the name Laser. These are very odd names, but you know what? We'll respect them because I'm sure if I didn't, I'd be accused of not having a leg to stand on. I'm going to circle back to JK before we finish with some music. This comment by Billy Bragg perfectly sums up what left-wing women have taken from left-wing men over the last few years. The problem isn't whether Julie Bindo and I are correct on the issues, but that certain right-wingers agree with us. Now, this goes on for a while longer. The quote, My problem with people like Rowling, like Julie Bindle, is really who are they lined up with. Rowling and Bindle are people who I agree with about women's rights. I agree with them about abortion, but we don't agree on this. It reminds me of a TV debate I did back with Red Wedge. The problem Billy Bragg has is you can't say you agree with them on women's rights, but not agree on an aspect of women's rights that biological women are arguing against or for, depending on your political leaning and of course your belief system. I am removed from this, honestly, seriously, you all need to get behind No Lives Matter. It will save you so much of a ball ache. The final tweet, Pop Cray, Neil Tennant of the Pet Shop Boys claims Taylor Swift doesn't have any famous songs. Currently, Taylor Swift's album, the new one, yeah, and Pet Shop Boys' new album are currently in the UK midweek charts one and two. The quote from Neil Tennant reads, Taylor Swift sort of fascinates me as a phenomenon because she's so popular and I sort of quite like the whole thing. But then when I listen to the records for a phenomenon as big as she is, where are the famous songs? What's Taylor Swift's Billie Jean? I thought it was Shake It Off because it's the only one I've ever heard of. The only thing I know about Taylor Swift beyond that is the rather long list of ex-boyfriends and all of them featuring on albums. Reply underneath from White Hot Peppers. Name five famous songs by the Pet Shop Boys. I'll wait. I can do this. This will be fun. See, I'm not the biggest fan of Pet Shop Boys, but I know their music. So let's go with Being Boring, It's Alright, Rent, So Hard, Always On My Mind, Left My Own Devices, Suburbia, Go West, Heart, Domino Dancing, What Have I Done To Deserve This, It's A Sin, West End Girls. How's that? The Pet Shop Boys have been going around for decades. I can rephrase that sentence and it can still apply to Taylor Swift, but you won't like how I do it. Both inhabit genres of music I'm not overly fond of. Death to all but metal. Seriously. 